By using the concepts of flow, motion, and contradiction, we can identify areas of structural vulnerability where systems are liable to disruption and change, and can see how the social relations that define fundamental aspects of our economy are constructs that can be torn down and replaced with new ones that better serve our interests. The starting point of dialectics is to recognize that change is characteristic of all things in the universe. The universe itself, the solar system, the earth, human societies, individual humans, and so on, are all constantly changing. It is stability that is the exception to the norm and that needs to be explained rather than change. In centering change, dialectics places itself in direct opposition to the methodology that is most commonly used in the Western world Cartesian rationality. Cartesian rationality, named after the French philosopher René Descartes, uses linear and deductive reasoning, seeks to understand how systems work by breaking them down into their individual constituent parts, such as breaking down an atom into its constituent protons and electrons, or breaking down society to the level of the individual, and assumes that the nature of systems or phenomena are stagnant throughout time. Change is the aberration from the norm in otherwise stable systems. Dialectics, by contrast, is a methodology that sees things as being in motion and identifies how and why things change. It does not assume that things have a single, unchanging definition throughout time. Instead, it sees things as being defined by processes, flows, and relations that can and do change and as they change, so too does the object of analysis. For example, let's think about the question of whether or not labor unions help or hurt the prospects of revolution. From a dialectical perspective, we can see that the answer is, it depends on the context. Labor unions could be focal points for raising class consciousness and building radical movements. Sadly, however, as Gerald Friedman argues in his book, Reigniting the Labor Movement, Unions can also fall into the trap of centering the needs of capital, institutionalizing and watering down resistance to capitalism, and restraining worker militancy. A dialectical framework that sees definitions as inherently prone to change in response to underlying social relations makes this type of a nuanced analysis possible. Studying flows, processes, and relations can also illuminate where systems are vulnerable to cracks, fissures, or ruptures in the way that they typically operate. It helps us see which variables come into play that sustain or disrupt ongoing dynamic processes. Another example that helps shed light on the importance of the dialectical method is in the analysis of capital. In mainstream economics, capital is conceived of as a store of value, either in the form of money, in the form of assets, or in the form of productive equipment, which can be put to use to generate profits. But for Marx, the value represented by capital can be represented as a circuit in motion, what he called the circuit of capital. The ultimate goal of each round of production under capitalism is the realization of profit, but this can only be made possible through the constant circulation and transformation of capital. Capitalists must take their capital in the form of money to the market, purchase the inputs of production, including productive capital, and then sell the finished commodities on the market in order to make a profit, more capital in the form of money. Conceiving of capital as a flow in motion whose form or definition changes throughout the productive cycle shows where the system is vulnerable to change or disruption because the blockage of any one stage can cause crashes or crises if it is sufficiently severe and widespread. For example, if a sufficient number of workers decide to strike, the circulation of capital will be impeded because commodities won't be produced, so the value that capital represents will lie dormant and no profit making will take place. So conceiving of capital as a flow in motion shows where the system is exposed and draws our attention to the variables that are liable to disrupt that motion. As David Harvey argues, 
Dialectics forces us to always ask the question of everything or event that we encounter. By what process was it constituted and how is it sustained? Because dialectics emphasizes the flows and processes that constitute a given object of analysis, that brings us to a second fundamental concept, which is that things are assumed to be internally contradictory. If dialectics is a study of change and processes, then understanding the role of contradiction is one of the most important tools that we have to begin to untangle these processes and to see their dynamics. In Dance with the Dialectic, political theorist Bertel Ullman defines contradiction as a union of two or more processes that are simultaneously supporting and undermining one another. In the dialectical sense, contradiction refers to two seemingly opposed forces um, being simultaneously present in a given event, scenario, or phenomenon. There are innumerable contradictions within capitalist society that all serve as potential flashpoints for crises, rebellions, or destabilization. They reveal to us that capitalism is far from a stable, unchanging, or eternal system that will always exist. Instead, contradictions serve as sites of fissures or cracks within the system, which can ultimately spur revolutionary social change, especially if we organize to make that happen. In 17 Contradictions in the End of Capitalism, David Harvey argues that one of the most important contradictions within capitalism is the tension between a commodity's use value and its exchange value. The profit-maximizing imperative of the capitalist system creates a contradiction in the sense that the provisioning of commodities on the market occurs on the basis of their profitability, their exchange value, and not on the basis of human need, their use value. To see how this contradiction can cause social destabilization, we can look no further than the housing crisis in the United States that started in 2007, which led to millions of families being evicted from their homes. The capitalist class's pursuit of housing as an exchange value destroyed the provisioning of housing on the basis of its use value. Harvey argues that activists can seize upon the contradiction within capitalism by fighting for a world in which the direct provision of adequate use values for all, housing, education, food, security, etc., take precedence over their provision through a profit-maximizing market system that concentrates exchange values in a few private hands and allocates goods on the basis of ability to pay. Dialectical methodology tells us that contradictions give rise to unsustainable tensions that must be resolved. On a similar note, Bertel Ullman argues in Dance with a Dialectic that contradiction can be resolved in one of two ways. Firstly, contradiction can be resolved on one level, such as in terms of particular sets of social relations, a particular geographic place, or a particular moment in time, only to be reallocated to a higher level, or in other words, the contradiction doesn't get resolved but merely moved around. One example of this is how capitalists typically resolve the crisis of overproduction, which occurs when capitalists invest too much in productive equipment to generate output relative to the growth of consumer demand. In order to solve this contradiction in the short run, capitalists, and especially those in imperialist nations, may seek to gain control over foreign markets in order to access new customers. But while this can solve the problem, of an imbalance between supply and demand in one particular geographic area or country, in the long run, this simply amounts to kicking the can down the road or moving the contradiction of overproduction to a more elevated stage by now involving the market, you know, the international market. The tendency of capitalism to generate income inequality and therefore the capitalist class's ability to invest in productive machinery at a pace that far outstrips the growth of market demand has not fundamentally been resolved. This contradiction has now just, you know, been expanded to include more markets and it will eventually come to a head in those as well. A second way that contradictions can resolve themselves occur when elements in contradiction, such as social relations, undergo a complete and total qualitative change, 
potentially giving rise to an entirely new system out of which they are constituted. This occurs in the case of, for example, the contradictions and antagonisms between classes being solved by a political and economic revolution that gives birth to an entirely new mode of production, or in other words, an entirely new economic and social structure. One example of this is the transition from feudalism to capitalism. And the dialectical methodology also allows us to predict that class contradictions in capitalism will give rise to a new system. In the famous words of Rosa Luxemburg, that new system will either be socialism or barbarism. It is for this reason that Ullman stated in Dance with the Dialectic that it is contradiction more than any other notion that enables Marx to avoid stasis and one-sidedness in thinking about the organic and historical movements of the capitalist mode of production, about how they affect each other and develop from their origins in feudalism to whatever lies just over our horizon. A final point of orientation for the dialectical method is that it views analyses of individual parts of a system as being limited in analytical value, unless that analysis clearly provides a theory about how the parts of a system relate to the entire system as a whole. While dialectics can accommodate a perspective that allows for an analysis of individual parts, it stresses the interconnectedness of the different parts, both to themselves and to the larger holes or context in which the part exists. Marx connected the holes and parts of a system together in a method that's been called a descent from the concrete real to the abstract. By concrete real, Marx was referring to the tangible facts or particular examples or cases inductively drawn from reality through the use of our senses. For example, the concept of concrete labor in his labor theory of value refers to the labor of a particular worker rather than work as an abstract category in general. In his contribution to a critique of political economy, Marx stated that the concrete concept is concrete because it is a synthesis of many definitions, thus representing the unity of diverse aspects. It appears therefore in reasoning as a summing up, a result, and not as the starting point, although it is the real point of origin and thus also the point of origin of perception and imagination. What Marx was referring to with this seemingly paradoxical definition of unity of diverse aspects was that concrete elements of a given system are tied together by the interconnection and interaction, and that the existence of one category presupposes the existence of other categories. Again, quoting Marx, for example, the simplest economic category, e.g. exchange value, presupposes population, a population moreover which produces under definite conditions, as well as a distinct kind of family or community or state, etc. Exchange value cannot exist except as an abstract unilateral relation of an already existing concrete organic whole. So even the seemingly simplest economic categories, such as exchange value, cannot exist independent of the larger social and economic structures that allow for its existence, such as private property or the existence of a state which is willing to forcefully defend private property relations, such as through the use of police and the legal systems, and which therefore give the capitalist class the right to profit off of workers' labor. Exchange value doesn't have an inherent meaning, nor could it even exist as a category without being situated in this broader context. By taking an approach that emphasizes the wholeness of reality, dialectics helps us see how categories and phenomena are interconnected and emphasizes the importance of interactions and nonlinear causal chains. In this way, it is arguably a superior methodology to account for the complex, contradictory, and even unpredictable nature of human beings, society, and even facets of the natural world. This in turn leads to a better understanding of our own behavior and our own relationships, as well as the relationships between uh, you know, economic and social phenomena and categories.
Dialectics is a methodology that sees transformation as being a fundamental quality of all human societies. Because it is a theory of change, and especially social change, it has revolutionary implications, and the exploration or theorizing about other possible worlds is integral to the methodology. By using the concepts of flow, motion, and contradiction, we can identify areas of structural vulnerability where systems are liable to disruption and change, and can see how the social relations that define fundamental aspects of our economy are constructs that can be torn down and replaced with new ones that better serve our interests. Dialectics therefore allows us to discern potential avenues for the construction of new social orders and collective identities and new forms of relating to one another. And more so than inspiring hope in the possibility and even inevitability of change, dialectics also provides us with a revolutionary roadmap for political praxis. The methodology shows us that the catalyst to transformation is contradiction, a unity of forces that are pulling in opposite directions and which ultimately will give rise to a synthesis that can either advance human societies in a positive way, but which can also result in crises and destabilization, depending on the relative strength of those contradictory forces. Here, we are not passive agents in this process, nor are contradictions imposed by structural forces from the outside. Rather, they are the product of a living process in which the choices that we make to engage in political activism and organizing and to raise class consciousness by illuminating capitalism's structural weaknesses in the form of its contradictions can play the decisive role in how contradictions resolve themselves. The dominant view, explicitly or implicitly, is that capitalism will last forever. From a dialectical materialist standpoint, however, we can see that this is only a moment or a phase in the long history of humanity. Like other systems that have come before it, capitalism's innumerable contradictions will inevitably give rise to transformative change. What the future beyond capitalism looks like depends on us. <laughs>